Hey everybody, welcome back to the Build Show Network. Steve Basic, architect, and I'm live from the staircase in the modern farmhouse. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the design and the construction of our three inch white oak floating treads. So you can see here, we basically have that three inch box tread that's floating, meaning that we don't have any risers there, in between the two stringers. So the stringers are basically LVL stringers. You can see here, these are just temporary. You can see on this side here and then on that side over there, we basically have these um, inch and a half maple blocks that are ledger locked into those LVLs as cleats. So basically this three inch box newel gets fabricated on three sides there's uh, lock miter joints in all four corners. It basically slides over that cleat. So that cleat is there, the box newel slides over it, and then we close it with the fourth piece of the box. Again, lock miter, they glue it up, they clamp it, leave it there for a day or so, and unclamp it, but then you end up with this nice sturdy box newel that gives that nice floating look. Now, one of the challenges we had was with the three inch box newel, we exceeded the five inch spear number there. So we had to put this little cleat underneath there that kind of fades away into the box newel, but it gets that dimension down for us so that we can meet code. Um, let's jump down here and we'll just take a look at it from another perspective. So we jumped around down the front here. I just want to give you the front visual so we have that three inch box newel. You can see we have that little cleat that we had to add in there so that we get that code approved uh, space here, that minimum amount of space that we're, maximum amount of space that we're allowed. But uh, you can see it pretty much, it just adds a little bit of intrigue to those box newels. I don't think it really takes away anything from it, but uh, gives a nice floating look, but you get that bulkiness of that three inch uh, box and, uh, you know, Brian, who does everything kind of to the nth degree, inside here, we have a couple of cleats that are vertical that run through the middle of the box that are glued in there. And they're basic, basically stiffener plates. So, you know, I, I run my 150 pound frame up and down these stairs and these things don't jiggle one bit. So, so we jumped up here to the top of the stairs. We have the landing here. Now, one of the things that's a little different about these stairs, in which through a little bit of a curveball or wrench into the building inspector's gears that we had um, some minor chats, let's just say, over, was I actually brought the landing out six inches. So you can see it comes out. Traditionally in a staircase, the last tread would go and get fitted up next to that riser, and it would be a full solid riser here, and then it would just go up to the landing. But I wanted to give that floating effect on all of the stairs. So I designed it so that the first um, tread or landing tread actually came out six inches. So we have kind of a half tread up there. And, you know, that gives me that kind of nice airy feel on that first step down. So it stays true to the idea of this floating box tread staircase here so we don't have that type. Let's jump back to the studio. I got some beautiful drawings all in section. We can take a look at this and talk a little bit more about stair design in detail back at the studio. So we'll see you back there. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed that trip out to the job site. Um, yeah, those stairs are one of the highlights of the project. Good buddy Brian, Howell Custom Building Group. Killing it. Doing a beautiful job. So they look beautiful, but before they look beautiful, we had to do some thinking. So let's grab these drawings. Let's talk about some of that thinking. All right. So you got one of the drawings out here. I actually uh, took a couple images out of the drawings section, and then I blew up the stair there. But to give you a little orientation, you can see here, this is the stairwell from the basement, first floor, second floor. It's what we term a switchback stair. Um, notice that it finished on the upper level with an open rail, closed wall down below. A number of 
issues when designing stairs that you have to uh, adhere to for the code. There is a rise dimension. There is a run dimension on how long the tread can be, how high the tread can be. In this case here, we have the open tread. Remember that we talked about that when we were out on the site. So we have this four inch sphere dimension there and at the rails there that I show. And it's as a reminder to myself to make sure that we're properly spacing things so that they fit within that realm of the code. But uh, what I really wanted to talk about was how these box treads were constructed and, you know, this area right here. So I took basically this section here, glue it up over here. So you can see a number of things happening here. One, you know, we have a little over seven inch in our rise here. We have to maintain that four inches in that spherical dimension. And we have one foot for a run, but understand that the back side of the tread and the front side of the tread, they're displaced slightly. And that was intentional, that they kind of tuck under, that you don't see that edge that quick. Um, so couple things at hand. Obviously, those make it the tread. The rise makes it. The sphere does make it, but it makes it because there's that little nib that we talked about out on the job site, right? So that allows that, I don't know, it's about four and five eighths to come down to three and seven eighths. So it clearly makes that four inch sphere dimension. They're afraid of, you know, kids climbing up here and crawling and falling through the middle of the stairs. So four inches is that dimension that we have to handle. Um, remember out there, we also talked about, these are a box newel. They're three inches, right? So that three out of the seven leaves four and we wanted to take it down to that three and seven eighths. That's why we put that little nib on there. But in the middle of these, there's basically that maple rail that these box newels just slid on. And then we did this back piece here that um, gets mitered and glued to the back side of the tread. So it basically closes it up afterward. So that way there you get that nice clean look. You have the finished stringer sitting against the wall but once you slide these on the only real contact is that white oak tread to that finished stringer so it gives that really nice clean appearance and clean look there that you know falls in alignment with our thoughts there for the modern farmhouse um, lastly the one thing i wanted to talk about and we talked about it up there is notice that typically the landing would finish something like that and the the tread would normally just come in and finish out against it but i didn't want that i wanted to have this space here so that as i went up the stairs even the last tread experience was the same experience as all of the other treads climbing up right so in order to do that I pulled this away the same distance or, you know, like six inches and we developed a half tread up here. And then the half tread coming out allows us to get that same visual experience when I'm climbing the stairs. And actually it helped a whole bunch of things lay out. But what was interesting was the building inspector was having a really hard time with this. He really wanted us to, to attach that. He goes, no, the last tread has to be attached. And I kept arguing, well, not arguing, discussing. I said, how is it that there's a requirement to attach one tread, but none of these, these can all be air open. And all of a sudden you're concerned about air open at the top. 
And uh, I told them, I said, just think of this as an extended portion of the landing. It's really not a tread. It is just an extended portion of the landing. So anyways, it got built. It's in there. As you can see, I think it looks beautiful. Um, you know, many praises to my good friend Brian out there running the show. Um, you know, captaining that ship as, as good as anybody I know. Howell Custom Building Group just doing a phenomenal job out there. So, anyways, that's everything about the boxed tread out at the Modern Farmhouse. All right. That's a wrap. I'm not going to say it today. I know you want me to, but I'm not going to, and you can't make me. Uh, that's all we got for this week's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. <clears throat> that staircase is uh, gorgeous. Brian did a beautiful job. Um, until next time, if you're looking for more, I got a bunch of videos out there, a whole year's worth at this point. So go check them out. Um, they say to truly comprehend um, anything within um, video learning, you got to watch them at least about five or six times. So just saying, that's what, uh, that's what the science says. So I would uh, follow the science. Go back, watch them five, six times. Catch up. If you're done with mine, I say go to look at Matt, look at Jake, look at uh, Wade, and look at Brent. These guys are doing some beautiful work. It's always a treat to watch their stuff. Um, great guys doing great stuff. If you're looking for more from me, find me on Instagram, Steve Basic Architect. I'm there. My daughter works with me, Alexandra Basic. She's on Instagram, dropping knowledge. Every day we're trying to share some information, make this industry a little bit better. Lastly, on Build It Podcast, every two weeks, my good friends Jake and Pete, we uh, are dropping uh, information. We talk about all kinds of complex building science concepts. We break them down, we unbuild them, and uh, we try and make sense of them. We offer our opinions. I mean, between the, the three of us, I have 30 years, Jake, Probably got 25-ish years. Pete's got about 80 years of experience. So, yeah, do the math. You'll figure it out. That's a lie. Um, anyways, that's it for the build show this week. Until next time, long live our buildings.